So in the last video, we converted our index.html into our master template and our default.aspx page, and that gives us our main page. But now what we want to do is make this a multi-page website. And so what we're going to do is add a web page to this link. So when the user hits this link, it will drill down into a new content page that will have content regarding this subject. So let's flip back to Visual Studio. Now before we add our new content page, I actually made a mistake in the last video and sorry about that. We actually needed that ASP code that we deleted out of our head. So I'm just going to copy and paste that back over our existing code and there you can see we've got our content placeholder IDs back and this is for our head section and I forgot I'm kind of doing this off of memory but we actually did need this and what it does is it basically pulls in our style sheet for the rest of the content pages that we add so that's how our style sheet is pulled in it's pulled in by using this content placeholder ID and of course this was a default that's all we deleted yesterday so I've just added it back and then all we need to do is add the HTML tags back to our content page and this is stuff I just deleted uh, in our last video so we'll just uh, put those back and there you go that's all we needed to do and again any further content pages that we add and we're going to do that in a minute we'll have this as a template and I'll show you that in a second and as I said this actually pulls in our style sheet from our master page dot master now you can just kind of forget about this because we're going to really use our main content that's why I named this main content we really don't have to worry about this anymore it's just sort of in the background it'll pull in our style sheet and we can forget about it we're really still concerned about this ASP tag that we were working on in the last video. And same goes for this. We can kind of just forget about this. And let's just uh, save everything up here and let's just make sure our website continues to work. It should, but it's always good to test it when you add new code or code back in this case. And yeah, everything looks good. So let's flip back to Visual Studio. And so now let's add our further content page. Now, what I want to point out is that you will probably only have one master page for your website because this is our template and this kind of represents the theme of our entire website. You might add another master page, but usually I only add one, but you could add a couple. But again, I kind of like to keep the same theme throughout the website. And so that means using the same template. So usually I only use one master page. And as I said in the last video, once you get that master page going, you're really just adding content pages. Your life becomes a lot easier. So think about this. You'll probably only have one master page template, but you could have dozens, even hundreds of content pages. So given that fact that we could have hundreds of web pages, it doesn't make sense to dump all of our content pages into our root directory because it will become a mess very quickly. So what we want to do is create a folder to hold all of our content pages and we can set up a nice folder structure. So let's add new folder and we're simply going to call this web pages. Pretty simple. And so we want to break this down even further. Let's add a folder for all of our Rome web pages. So let's add a folder and we're just going to call that Rome. Pretty easy stuff. And now let's create our content page for our subject on Rome. So we're going to add new item. We're going to select web form. And of course, we're not going to use default.aspx. That name is reserved for our main content page. So we're going to call this rome.aspx very appropriately. We're going to select master page. Now, you're always going to do that for any further content pages that you add. Always have to select our template, right? We want to pull that in. And we only have one master page, so that's pretty easy. We hit OK. And there you see now we've got our rome.aspx. Now I want you to take a look at this. This is pretty cool. Here's our master page that we're pulling in, right? But look at this. It automatically creates our content placeholders for us based off what we had in our default. Look at that. It even took the same ID names that we used. In this case, it used main content one. So we don't have to type any of this over. Look how easy this is. But like I said, we're only concerned about our main content one placeholder. We don't care about this anymore. This is just pulling in our CSS. So now we have to go ahead and put some content in here, right? And so I've already typed all this out. I'm going to copy and paste this in here. By the way, I will uh, put all this text that I'm about to put in here. I will make a link for this to all this text in case you're following along. I will also re-upload the code for both of these pages since we changed them. Okay, so let's go ahead and copy and paste everything in here that I've typed up. And you can see I've typed up this nice little article here. I've got a subject on the Roman Senate, and then we're going to talk about the Roman assemblies. By the way, uh, can you tell that I am a history buff? I am. Actually, this is the only time I'm going to do this. I've never plugged my History Den 
YouTube, but I have another YouTube site that's called History Den. And it's all one word. It's called History Den, right there. So if you're interested in history, you can check out that channel as well. Okay, so this is the article that I've typed up here. And so uh, you can see all the little line breaks and everything here. So let's hit save all. And we're just going to save this SLN file again. And whoops, there's one more thing we have to do. And I just remembered it. Let's see here. We have to actually point to our page. And we're going to do that on our default page right here. So we're actually going to have to point to our page now, right? We're pointing to this old index.html. That's not going to work. So let's switch our href to our new roam.aspx content page. And so we're just going to type in web pages. We're going to do a backspace. And then we're going to type in roam for our other folder. And then our actual ASPX page, which of course is roam.aspx. And now this content page will load up when we click on our link. So let's go ahead and save all. Now, before we load up our page, I just want to point out one thing. This, this attribute right here, this target, this actually loads up a separate page when we click on the link. And I'll show you that right now. So what we'll do here is we'll load the web page first with this parameter so you can see what it looks like opening up a separate page. And then we're going to remove this parameter because I like to keep all the content within our main page because I think that's easier on the users. But if you prefer to open up separate pages, you can go ahead and keep this a parameter. But I think it's better actually to keep everything on the same page because I like a common look and feel to everything. So let's go ahead and load up our web page and hopefully our first content page drill down works. So let's click on this. And there you can see, look at that. Now, I find that jolting to open up a separate window here. The whole point of this is to keep everything in our main content pane. So let's close all this out and let's remove this parameter. And we'll do a save all. Let's go ahead and load our web page up again. Let's click on our link and look at that. It stayed right inside our main content window. And look how nice that is. We have the same look and feel. This is very easy on the user now. Nothing here changes. And that's the whole point of master and content pages. We want to keep everything the same. It's easy on the eyes. Simplicity is the key. And that's why this is really nice. Now, if we go back, and we hit this again, just keep an eye, nothing changes. We're just loading content now. Now we're gonna create some back buttons in the future and do some other things, but for now, we just have to hit the back button, but we'll change that in future videos. Now I wanna point out that obviously, uh, this doesn't look too good, the text itself. So we need to actually add some styling to this. Yes, believe it or not, this isn't all just about ASP. I want you to think of Visual Studio as your end environment. We're going to continually add HTML, CSS, all kinds of things. It's not all about ASP. You will always have to refine your web page, and we can do all of that in Visual Studio. So that's what we're going to do in the next video. We're actually going to add some CSS and some HTML to make this look even better. See you guys then.